Bo Henry, as in every Friday night, with me as always, the one and only, David Casel. What? Dave! What's up, dog? Matt's dead. What are you doing, doing Bo? Turn down that no. stupid intro music. Just, just, you're the one who chose the fucking intro music. Yeah, but you don't play it all loud when you're trying to fucking intro. Like, you couldn't I hear you for, like, the first four seconds of that. You couldn't? No. I was, like, fucking doom, yelling. Doom, 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 doom. You could hear it, like, crack, like just creeping through a little bit. Creeping. Creeping on the come up. Good album, by the way. Dude, so I missed last week. Were you super depressed? You were super depressed because you missed last week? No, dude. No, were you? Was I? No, no, I did other shit. What did you do? I was like, actually, like, ah, a week off from talking to Dave. This is, uh, I spent that time meditating. I feel a lot more centered. And I, I feel like my all my chakras are now aligned because it was it's now been two weeks since I've spoken with you. Yeah, dude. I mean, you never talk to Dave. First of all, that, that that person's never here, so that's good. He isn't. Because my name's because my name's David. You know, it, it has an ID on it. It has an ID. So you. Yeah. You, you can hear me just fine, right? I mean, for the most part, yeah. For the most part. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to get my audio situation under control. All right? So, this, this is my struggles. I went and got, I got a sweet-ass microphone. I got uh audio interface. Got everything plugged in, hooked up. Somehow, me doing that made my keyboard not work, which doesn't make any sense. And then, even though, even though the microphone I confirmed actually works, because the microphone will, like, play through a, uh, oh, shit, uh, audio programming, for some reason, when I try to use it for any type of Skype session, anything along those lines, it would not work. So I am distraught, ladies and gentlemen. It's not. Uh, so now I'm using my microphone that's on my webcam, which is suboptimal. And my phone. Well, I mean, that's what you get for buying shit at Dollar General, dude. I didn't buy the shit at Dalio, Dalio Central, whatever. I bought the shit at, um, uh, what's it called, Amazon? I hear that's a thing now, right? No, dude. All that shit comes from no. China. You don't want to get any of China, that of course. Jeebies, dude. That's where the good shit comes from. So, yeah, man. That wild uh, out. Exciting two weeks. Um, so, anything exciting happened within the last two weeks, non work related? Um, no. <laughs> it's no. all been work related. Everything I everything I do is work, dude. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, you know, unspecifically work related. Like, let's go abstract. So like, how have you grown as a human being these last two weeks uh outside of work? Or or what about work? Uh, you can, it could be because of work, but let's not specifically go into details of what you do at your job because I'm trying not to sleep tonight. <laughs> well, I uh, I don't know. It, it just there's a there's a vast increase in responsibility. So with that came another degree of confidence, I guess. More of like not a cockiness, but like there are people people react to you differently when you're their boss. So, I mean, like, it's trying to find the respect for that. But, I mean, if you, 
you have to, like you were saying, it's a big thing where you have to have like a personal deep respect for yourself and grow as a human because a lot of bosses are just shitheads and they suck. And there's a really weird balance trying to find where you're like friends with someone, but you're friends that want to like both make each other succeed, not like, you know, fuck off because you're friends with them. You know, like you, you, you have to still maintain this, this, this line at the same time. And I guess that's like a hard thing to, to sort of always be aware of, you know what I mean? No, I get it, man. Like, uh, yeah, you know, one time I was a I worked at a place and I got promoted super fast and there was people that I worked with at the time who were still I don't know, I ended up becoming their boss, but they were my friends too because they worked there a little bit before I was promoted. So I ended up being their boss and what happened was see what had happened was turns out my boss was like fucking a bunch of my employees who worked for me so so there was like a hierarchy and of course my boss and um so it came out that he had done this and all this stuff and i was talking to this girl who worked with me about it like off the clock or whatever and she got like super upset about the whole situation and like wrote a bunch of stuff down. Well, actually she didn't get upset. She wrote a bunch of stuff down that I said, because what I didn't know is that she was also fucking him. And so I made some type of decision at some point that made her angry. And she had written down all this stuff that could possibly get me in trouble. And that's one way I got fired from one job. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, why would you have stuff where it could be written down that you could be? That's that's the thing I avoid completely. Like, no one has a thing that they could write about me that says I, you know, was a piece of shit to them ever. Like, I'm, just, I'm not. Ah, I've never been a. I don't know, David. David, what? I've worked with you. You've definitely. Yeah, when was I ever a bad person? Oh, we said no, things, of I, course, that's what I'm but. Right, yeah. right. I was never a bad person. I don't think I did anything that was a bad person, anything like that. You never, like, but held her down myself- and fingered her or anything? Well, you know, I mean, that comes with the job. All right, that's how you get promoted. No, of course not. Of course not. No, and that's the thing. The place that I worked at was, like, that's what all the managers were doing. Like, all the managers were, like, fucking people that worked for them and stuff except me. And then, like, I said something to somebody about it, and then they fired me about it. Because, I guess, yeah, the other well, people so, dude. who fired me was fucking someone. Huh? Yeah, just keep your mouth shut, dude. That's a good point. I have I have a hard time <laughs> keeping my mouth shut. That's, that's my problem. I got 99 problems, but keeping my mouth shut ain't one. Uh, come on now, come on now. We know that ain't true. You you speak your mind a little probably. You've been a little too cavalier with things that you said that could probably get you in trouble a couple times. Oh man, I have been. I've said some of the gnarliest, most awful jokes that you could ever even possibly imagine. Like like, give us an example. No. Those no. are closed room only. Closed room. Okay, but but this is an open this is an open forum here. I mean, you're not With at work, thousands. so you're not going to get for it. Yeah. So what'd you say? Oh, just stuff about you know nope. people with disabilities, and stuff like that. Well, I mean, but who hasn't? Who who better who better to make fun of? And people with disabilities are a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> you know who I has mean, a, really serious, really serious physical disabilities? Not like little ones, you know. It has to be like intense ones, right? Like a dude that's missing the you know leg, like from the hip. 
So, so what's a joke that you would say about somebody who's missing his legs from a tip down? <laughs> I don't know. What's up, Spine Walker? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Can you at least do curls? Spine Walker. That's the best you got because it's this week. For the most part, I don't want to be mean right now. I'm in a good mood. I'm positive, oh. happy. So many good. You're in a good mood. I think you don't want to yeah. be mean. You don't want to say it because now you're in like a management position and you're worried that somebody's going to listen to it and get you in trouble. <laughs> no. Did you? I just, I'm you that good. I'm a good person. Podcast? What? I said, did you did you tell people that you work with that, to listen to your podcast? Is that what it is? No, I didn't tell them that. I mean, they may listen if they feel like it, but I don't know. I don't want them to find out about, like, what? Do, do you know who I think has it the best in life? Who? Terminally ill children. Why do you feel like that? I mean, think about it. You know, so if you ever see any of the, any documentaries or anything where they're talking about it, like, okay, okay so I'll, I'll give you an example. All right, I knew this kid, or I knew this uh, this family, and the kid in the family got cancer, right? And so, so. So he gets to do the Make-A-Wish Foundation thing. And his, like, Make-A-Wish Foundation is that he wants to meet Derek Jeter. So not only does he get to go meet Derek Jeter, he meets, like, all of the freaking Yankees. He meets, like, Alex Rodriguez. He meets that and, and all that stuff. Not only did they do that, they make a big deal out of it at the stadium. They let him throw out the first pitch, you know. And if and, – you know, he's got, you know, he's, he's sick. So, like, you know, he throws a little pathetic ball. It, like, kind of rolls and trickles down to the to the catcher, and he has to run up and get it. But everybody applauds, you know. And he gets to meet all the Yankees and do all this type of stuff, and then nobody else in their life ever gets to do that. Not only that, if you watch any of these documentaries about him and stuff, you know, the family's always, like, Oh, he just was a light to everybody and made everybody smile and just like them being there and and, and you know they end up, you know this is gonna sound horrible, but you know they're gone before life gets them down, you know? So they're like this bright light to everybody else before like the real world start really, you know. And then, like everybody, who you don't knows think them the fact the that the, the that they're dying and they're not going to get to live a whole life isn't way more stressful and than, than actually getting to live a full one? You think it's like you think that's just like easy to deal with? You're like, oh, cool, I get to meet a fucking stupid baseball player, but I'm going to die. I don't think he really cares. I think I think it's way more like painful to probably survive for just a little bit than to have to live a whole life where you know. You just wasted it like you a piece think of about shit. It, though, man. I mean, like, the the family and stuff beforehand was all on meth and arguing all the time and stuff. Now the family's all piping together afterwards and stuff. It's just, you know, you have to go through stuff sometimes. Is this, like, a close thing? Because that's very specific. Well, you know, I mean, it kind of, you know, it's kind of a reality check when that type of thing happens, you know, you can't, you can't just keep, you know, you can't keep up a meth addiction when you're trying to take care of your kid who's passing away. Yeah.